Um, obviously not the best for online, but it wasn't exactly a large game in a three tries in the first and probably two in the last three. How do you sort of uh, see it from your perspective? Yeah, like is in the, the first 15 minutes, you know, we, we gave away a lot of cheap turnovers and possession to lines and you know, listen, you could see there were the game meant a huge amount of them. Um, which was what we expected, and we thought the game was going to mean a lot to us as well. Um, but they just beat us to the punch a good bit in that first 15 minutes, and suddenly it's 22 nil. Um, you know, we don't deal with the first kickoff, so they score after the first minute of the game. Um, when a scrum penalty goes 10 nil, another try, then we're as we're attacking in possession, we turn the ball over cheaply. They sprint in from 60 meters and. Yeah, 22 nil, as I say, after 15 minutes. And like after that, then like we have a lot of territory in possession um, down the other end of the field. And obviously, we get over, don't get the ball grounded. Again, I need to have a look back at that one. Um, we get held up on our back over the try line, a couple of chances, you know, it's uh, not straight line out. So, we had so many opportunities down that end, and we just weren't clinical enough ultimately. So, you know, if you get the score to what, 22. Even 22-7 at halftime makes a bit of a difference for the start of the second half. Certainly, if you get to 22-14, and then it's you know it's a different game, and you start to pull a bit more pressure in the Lions. But we never had enough of that pressure really. And even though we start the second half pretty well, get in for a try, get in for another try, you know, it was just unfortunately it wasn't enough, and we weren't accurate enough over the course of the game. And just I thought Lions brought a lot of physicality to the contact area, both sides of the ball, and um, yeah, unfortunately for us, we weren't quite good enough. Did what happened here last year, the way that game transpired, give you a little bit of an even lower scoreboard? Yeah, like I said, I, I don't even at half time at 22 nil. I didn't think there was no panic, sense of panic around like that. It was just keep doing what we're doing. Um, and you just listen, we just needed to execute on some of the opportunities that we were creating. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, to be fair, the lines were very dogged in everything that they did. And um, yeah, as I said, we would have sworn quite accurate across the board. And again, in terms of some of the contact work, I just thought lines were, were better than we were, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, there's a good old tough learning for our guys out there. Um, and that's the, I think the quality of this tournament is getting better all the time. So it's, uh, if you're a little bit off, um, you can, as I say, you can get that type of scoreline, you know, see, they rush out to a strong lead at the start. We're not quite accurate enough in terms of trying to, pull them in and make it a tight game. And obviously then a couple of tries in the last whatever two or three minutes um, is an extra bit of a sting, I guess, in the score. I struggled a little bit in the strongest of the game and was making some come up and putting it on the back foot pilot. Um I thought yeah, you know, I thought it was messy really like is in Personally, I thought I thought we would be able to paint more a stronger picture. I think we have a strong strong group there. So again I'll have a look back at some of the things that are going on there. Um, you know, one or two penalties, yeah, but uh, probably one or two penalties both ways, to be fair. I thought, uh, coach, looking forward quickly, uh, and especially with last night's victory last night, and potentially thought, does this change your strategy for the upcoming game against the Stormers? Or are you going to have to rethink what your plans were before you came to South Africa? Um, yeah. <laughs> We will, we will, it's everything is fluid at the moment, isn't it? So, um, you know, there's a lot of work has gone in to get us in the position where we are in. So we need to bloody work hard to make sure we try and stay there and push on. So that that's the piece. Um, you know, like, cause we, we travel away, like there's obviously lots of made of squads and rotations and all the rest of them. Everyone will have a different view, won't they? Like, but for us, like, is it, you know, like the model that we have, like, is in we primarily bring young players through the system and you've got to get them experience at some point so um and for the bulk of the season like the 18 regular urc games you know like we we have a core group that we use and a lot of these guys are with us here so um but yeah we'll we'll make some assessments so see there's a good physical game there as well so uh, a few guys a bit banged up and we'll, we'll see how they are um and make some calls as to what we do this week but this is good to cape town still play stormers like it's it's not going to get any easier for us, is it? Like, it's a bloody tough challenge down there. But that's the beauty, isn't it? Like, the competition for us. And it's it's tough. And our guys need to learn sometimes some harsh lessons. So and they've got a bloody harsh lesson out there today. So, but the hope is always that you'll be better for that experience. 
um, as painful as it sometimes is, um, you've got to go through it. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a, it was a like, rich learning for our guys out of that experience. As I said, as painful as it is. Tracking that code, squad rotation, is that the ultimate thing that one could do in, in the URC? Because it seems like everybody's done. Um, yeah, like it's a challenge, isn't it? Like, and that's like you're dealing with the length of the season. So whatever, you know, there's 18 regular season games. You have your four Champions Cup games. There's four playoff games. You've still like, if you want to win the URC, there's still another three knockout games, quarterfinal, semifinal, final. That's a hell of a lot of top end games, isn't it? Uh, and then we have a lot of guys in your squad that are also playing international rugby, whether that's World Cup and Six Nations. So like, you know, that's the thing, you know, you need to be able to rely on the next person up. Well, that's certainly our belief. Um, and like this competition means a hell of a lot to us. You know, we've lost the last couple of semi-finals, but you know, I know there's the, the, the competition has changed, but this will be one of the previous four years to that. So like it means something to us. It means a hell of a lot to us. Um, just like the Champions Cup means a hell of a lot to us as well. So we'd love to be stay successful in both competitions, but it's it's incredibly hard thing to do. Um, and you see it in other sports as well that are trying to juggle you know, classically, I don't know many soccer fans here, but uh, like Champions League and, you know, obviously we would watch a lot of Premier League football and how teams try to manage that as well. It's pretty hard going. So, um, and particularly with the nature of rugby and being a physical contact sport and making sure that you're able to deliver in terms of those physical performances. So um, I'm not sure anyone has the exact secrets recipe, but we're all searching for it, you know. And yes, we got ourselves in a good position. I thought we would have been better, you know, if we had... You know, taking a couple of those opportunities, particularly in the second half of the first half, you know, and you 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 get up to 22, it's said 22 14, you're going to the sheds at halftime, you know, you're potentially having a different conversation and you're putting a bit more pressure back on the lines, but we never really got to that point, unfortunately. Um, so there's a lot of learning there just about how we go about executing and being a little bit better across the board. Just check online, guys. Uh, anyone online looking to ask a question of Leo? There's your chance. Oh, okay, perfect. All good from the room. Well, watching the morning. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Give me a share for months or a pause. Thank you. Give me a share for months. Thanks, guys. Thanks so good luck. Thank you. Yes, I remember the number of the past. I remember the past. I Right, guys, coaching captain, got us off. Um, at one stage it felt like we wanted to give them points um now just a, a bit of areas in in you know back 40 back 50 uh in skill areas plus penalties if you're going to keep Leinster uh, attacking ball in that that zone you have to really defend well and i think I think that's probably the, what I'm the proudest about is just the fight in defence, the character in defence, the willingness to keep them out. Um, I think in 80 minutes is probably our best character fight, uh, probably this season, which obviously uh, 
well done to the players. It's, it's really good. And then to to have some counter attack uh, from scraps and and from ball on ground uh, to then finish it off is obviously uh, delightful. If you work that hard in defence and you get an opportunity to, to then use it, it's, it's good to see. Some defenders could fall in over footage from last year, corresponding matching. Obviously, to be honest, Liam, not that much. Um, we we currently, I don't want to say too much around, but we're currently in a focus on us and focus in the moment. Um, so we don't want to go back too far. Almost digging digging up old cows. Um, we did we did speak about it that if you if you are going to make uh, easy areas or you are going to give them turnover attack, they really good. Uh, if you are going to make like we said, penalties and you're going to give them access to your 22. They're really good there. So um, we did speak about lessons learned, definitely, but we didn't spend a lot of energy on it. Marius, did you relive a bit of your school days and how exciting you know, with all the turnovers on the ground today? Um, yeah, I think, you know, we, we knew that if we were going to dominate uh, tackles, there will be opportunities to, you know, we focus more on counter rucking second efforts after we've made a positive hit. So, um, yeah, I think we definitely slowed the ball down a few times like that, you know, especially lens on quick ball is not good enough. So, um, yeah, we, we had a big focus on second efforts in the breakdown and I thought we did that well. I think uh, one or two penalties off that. So it's probably just getting a few more repetitions in reading game situation in every breakdown. You must be really impressed. I mean, uh, there was a willingness to see from Ace to play a bit more in close quarters, you know, in that face and stuff. But you must be really, really proud with how you guys stood up. You know, it seemed like you were when it, when it became when it became close, you know, close quarters. Um, the action it seemed like you guys were basically you know? <laughs> Yeah, I think um, we knew we knew Leinster attack quite tight because. They want to bunch you in a bit and then they take you out wide. Uh, second half, they spread the ball a little bit more. Um, but we could see that they were getting tired, keeping the ball for multi-phases. And that's why they were just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And, and uh, I think our line speed forced them back inside. And they got a little bit reward because um, our catch-up catch wasn't working hard enough. Um, I think we sorted that out as well. Um, and then, yeah, I think from there on, we were able to get turnovers. And, and then because they were tight, uh, attacking tight, there were spaces out wide. Given, uh, given the pause on defence, how do you bottle that? The next game, the next game. I think Jock has got half of that answer. Uh, no, I think, Liam, we, we're back against the wall uh, in terms of it's must win games for us. Uh, so the kind of goes hand in hand with that. Every time we've really been back against the wall this season, we got that. Um, so like you said, the, the trick is to to reproduce that next weekend against Bunsen. I know there were a whole whack thought performance and section and stuff, but just talking about like like Leo Cullen also said, you know, the real trick is rotation in this tournament, but also to bowl the depth and stuff. But I was just wondering very, very slowly but surely a guy like Morgan is adding to that depth, you know, that you have the front with Asi and Dreyer and um, the Lucas and everyone. Just just how have you felt about his progress, you know, since was sort of like considered a bit of a bargain buy from the Pumas and stuff, and it took his time with his injuries and all those things. But how do you feel? It seems like he laid down a bargain almost in his scrumming and his general play today. I think he's the, he's the perfect picture of a modern prop, uh, especially at Lucid. So he was unfortunate with a couple of injuries that almost hindered that spurt of him coming through. But well, that's about eight or nine in a row where he, he's playing and he's getting good minutes and he's training well. So... Uh, really happy with where we are currently. It's it's nice seeing a, a guy that's been in the wilderness for three injuries, getting a stint and, and getting that flow going. So yeah, I think he was he was really good to me. Um, and uh, you know they'll be quite fired up for being signed before next week. Um, so how do you sort of go into that? Um, yeah, I don't think altitude will play a role with them. Um, they've been here for about twelve or ten days by, by next Saturday, so that, that shouldn't really be an issue. Um, 
I think it's a good, honest review. There's still a fair bit that that we can fix from today, and making sure that we keep on building on, on what's working for us, and and almost making sure we keep that identity of game model currently, which we feel when when we get it right, uh, we're really dangerous. Um, sticking to the basics, make sure we, we do our basics very well. And Marius, in terms of, I think you guys have been talking about the league last few games, trying make that top eight. You know, what do you think the result like this does for you? you know, although it was a bit of a second screen team, you know, completely different from last year where you guys fell apart in that second half. Instead, you guys kicked on towards many and then secured a big win. So does this now really find out that belief, you know, and give you guys the, uh, you know, to go on and secure that spot? Yeah, I think we need to make sure we stick to our processes, take it game for game, because um i mean you can't think too far ahead i mean you have to win next week to be able to stay in it it's so tight on the log that anything can happen so we have to make sure that like coach cash mentioned we stick to what we do we uh, and we manage the game as best as possible um yes obviously giving leinster 40 odd is definitely a confidence booster and um i mean it it will definitely lift monster for next week as well so um that should be able to lift us even more one watch about the really struggle with uh, today seems to be the lineups. Uh, what sort of went wrong there, and uh, is that something you guys look to address this week? Yeah, obviously we we um we need to look at it. We we did lose a couple of other ones. Um, I don't think it's a, it's a big thing. Probably a little bit of timing. Um, I I don't want to blame the crowd, but what I'm saying is it was actually quite loud. Seeing seeing so many. Guys coming out to support us. Um, so I just think it's a timing thing. Um, it's not a big thing lineup was. And wh while I mentioned the crowd, um, thanks for everyone that came out getting eight or ten or whatever thousand people against the Irish team here is, is awesome. Um, it felt like a lot more uh, good with energy. So keep on coming out. The team can feel it. The team enjoy it. And let's make Joba great. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.